Hey guys, Michael from Cocker Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over a shortcut for writing net ionic equations or net ionic reactions. So in all these examples that we're going to work through, the molecular equation has already been given. Now, if you have to predict the products, if you're only given the reactants and you have to predict the products, um, then you need to write the molecular equation. And if you're having trouble with that, I'll link a video in the description below of to walk you through how to predict the products. But assuming that you know how to get to the molecular equation, we'll talk about how to use the shortcut to get to the net ionic reaction. So the very first step is just to make sure that the reaction is balanced. And we'll start with this first one. So in this first one, everything's already balanced. You can see there's one HE on the left and right, one nitrogen on the left and right, uh, one K on the left and right, and one CO on the left and right. Just to, to make this video more efficient, I'm gonna assume you already know how to balance reaction, so I'm not gonna go into that too, in too much detail. Then the next step is you're gonna cross out any atoms or any ions elements um, that are they have the same states on both sides so for example we have one k that's aqueous on the left side and we also have a k that's aqueous on the right side so since they're both k's and they're both aqueous we can cross them out because they're the same um, another element that we can cross out is the no3 or i mean another ion uh, the nitrate ion is aqueous on the left and it's aqueous on the right so we'll also cross out the nitrate we're unable to cross out this, the AG, the silver, because it's aqueous on the left, but it's solid on the right. And same thing with the chlorides, aqueous on the left and, and solid on the right. So those we are unable to cross out. Then we just bring down anything that we haven't crossed out. We have AG, aqueous, plus CO, aqueous, forms AG, CO, solid. Then the last step, thing that we have to do is we have to just write the charge of the aqueous ions. Uh, for this, we can take a look at the periodic table. Well, let's start with the chlorine. The chlorine, you can see it's a halogen, so it's negative one charge. Um, and again, if you're having trouble predicting the charges as well, I'll link a video in the description below to tell you how to do that. And then silver is a transition metal, but it will always have a fixed charge of positive one. So that would be the net ionic reaction for the first, uh, the first reaction. Now for the second reaction, same approach, first step, just to make sure all the reactions are, the, the entire reaction is balanced. The nitrate is not balanced right now because you see there's two nitrates on the left, but there's only one on the right. So we'll put a two in front of here. Uh, by putting a two in front of here, we, we have now two sodiums and then we have two sodiums here. The magnesiums are balanced and then also the carbonates are balanced. Then we're going to cross out the ions that are the, that have the same states on both sides. I'm going to cross out the nitrate because you see we have two nitrates two nitrates are aqueous, and we also have two nitrates are aqueous here. So we'll cross out the nitrates, and we'll also cross out the sodium, because you see we have two sodiums that are aqueous, and over here we also have two sodiums that are aqueous. So cross out the sodiums, and we can cross out the magnesium or carbonate, because it's aqueous on the left, but solids on the right. So we're going to then bring down every anything that we have not crossed out. So magnesium aqueous plus CO3 aqueous forms MgCO3 solid. And then we're going to add the charges to the aqueous, to aqueous ions. So looking at the periodic table, magnesium's in that second column, so it'll be a two positive charge. And then carbonate is a polyatomic ion with a two negative charge. And that will be the net ionic reaction for the second one. Uh, let's take a look at the third example. So in this, in this third one, if, it, the reaction is already balanced because you see that it already has coefficients. So then we can move on to step two, which is crossing out the ions that are the, that have the same states on both sides. We can cross out the the Br because you can see we have two times three. We have six Brs on the left that are aqueous, and we also have six Brs on the right that's aqueous. So then we'll cross out the the Brs. Let's see what else can we cross out. Uh, we let, we can cross out the Ks because you see we have a total of three times two. Six Ks on the left are aqueous, and also six Ks on the right are aqueous. So cross out the Ks, but we can't cross out the CO because CO is aqueous on the left, uh, it's solid on the right, and same reasoning for sulfur. Now it's, then we're going to bring down everything that we have not crossed out, including the coefficients. So we bring two CO aqueous plus three S aqueous forms CO2 S3 solid. And the last thing we have to do is just add the charges to the aqueous components. Let's actually, let's start with the sulfur. Um, sulfur, you can see on the periodic table that it is in the same column as oxygen, so it'll be a two minus charge. And then cobalt is a, cobalt is a transition metal, so it can have multiple charges. To determine the charge of cobalt, we have to look at what it was, 
it's attached to. And it was bonded to a bromine. Bromines are halogens with a negative one charge. So each of them are negative one. So, uh, but you have three of them. So it's like negative three, which means the cobalt would have had to be positive three. So that is the net ionic reaction for um, for this example. All right, let's take a look at one last one. And then this last one, we once again have a molecular equation, molecular reaction that is already balanced because you can see there are coefficients. Then we're going to cross out the ions that are, have the same states on both sides. So we'll start by crossing out the nitrates. We have a total of two times three, which six nitrates are aqueous on the left, and six nitrates are aqueous on the right. So we'll cross out the nitrates. Uh, we can also cross out the, the two chromiums that are aqueous, and these two chromiums are aqueous. Cross out the three irons that are aqueous, and the three irons that are aqueous here. And then also the, the three sulfate aqueous, and the three sulfate aqueous here. So in this case, we're able to cross out everything because all the reactants and products were were aqueous. So that means that this reaction actually does not, not really happen. It means that there is no reaction and there's no net ionic reaction. So if you have a, a double replacement reaction in which everything is, is aqueous, then that means there's no net no reaction happening. And that that's it. That's how that's the shortcut for writing the net ionic reactions. Um, so again, step one was just to balance the, the molecular equation. Step two, cross out any ions that are the same states on both sides. Step three, carry down the things that you didn't cross out. And then step four, add the charges to the aqueous ions on the left hand. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.